Since the war started in Syria in 2012, 11 million people have been displaced, their homes destroyed, moving from place to place, living in tents. Mike Seawright is the founder of Relief Aid, a charity operated from here in New Zealand who has helped over 62,000 people affected so far. Please give a warm welcome to Mike Seawright. Yes. Thanks for having me. No, it is an absolute pleasure to have you here, Mike. You just returned from the Middle East, so what are conditions like for people there at the moment? I think Syria has been called the crisis of our generation and, and it hasn't changing. So we're continuing to see uh, civilians caught up in the middle of a conflict that they have never started, um, forced out of their homes after repeated and systematic bombings of their neighbourhoods, whole cities destroyed and now they're living in camps. Mm. And these camps are simply horrendous. The conditions, I think as you can see this is Aleppo city, um, conditions are absolutely atrocious. It seems like there's a little bit more, uh, people are becoming more aware of what is happening there with all the uh, the posts that have been appearing on Facebook and things. People seem to be a little bit more aware than what they were about what is happening in the area. Well, I think the challenge with a situation like Syria, with the scale of mm -hmm. the displacement, the number of people injured and killed, is that we lose uh, we lose you sight of the, it. Exactly, mm -hmm. of the humans that are there. And our business is the business of helping civilians, not uh, that they've started the war, not that they're engaged in the war, but they're simply families like ours that yeah. are caught in the middle of something that they have no party to. And, and this has been the challenge of the, the media dialogue, is to remind people that there are families just like yeah. ours there. Just like us living there. Yeah. That's right. And we do watch it, and a lot of us want to help, but what does Relief Aid actually do to help? Well, we're a conflict specialist, so we deliver humanitarian aid, uh, emergency aid in war zones, and so this is kind of our niche market. Unfortunately, it's a little bit challenging, and you can imagine uh, getting crossing borders, getting cargo in from neighbouring countries is difficult. Mm. And at times, we, you know, we ourselves have not been immune to the conflict. So, for example, in Aleppo last year, uh, our office got bombed in an airstrike, so got hit in an airstrike. Gosh. We moved to a new neighbourhood. Uh, which incidentally got hit in a chlorine gas attack two days later. And when we're fixing the communications equipment on our roof, two of our staff got killed by snipers. Ooh. And while we deliver humanitarian uh, assistance, and I, I personally feel very passionate about this, um, inspired by our teams who are on the front lines, are putting their lives at risk, and literally just go back to work the next day, despite mm. their colleagues being killed. How do you keep going with something like this? Because, I mean, it must be so disheartening when you are, as you're saying, getting bombed and, and people, staff are dying. Well, it's challenging, but I, ga I guess when you see the impact of what you do, despite the difficulties of seeing your staff killed, despite the logistical and, frankly, the financial challenges, because yeah. it's, it's pretty damn difficult to find the money to pay for our trucks, to find our warehousing, to distribute the aid to these camps, I just see what our end benefit is. That's 40,000 children have received assistance from us in the last two years. Wow. You have 30 civilians on your staff. What's the importance of that? Well, we're, one of the unique things about our organisation is that we recruit locally. So when you're working in conflict areas, it's very difficult to put large numbers of international staff in there. Some of the areas we work are controlled by Al-Qaeda, for example. They don't want to see people mm. like myself running around. So most of, our Syrian, uh, most of our staff are Syrians, and, they, and so what we have here is a situation where Syrians are looking after Syrians. They could have fled the country years ago. In fact, many of them are labelled now as activists by the government because they've been delivering humanitarian assistance inside opposition-controlled areas, yeah, that makes them and they still <laughs> stayed. So ha who am I to give up, you know, when they're doing what they're doing? It's extraordinary. So what are the people, like the families in Syria, what do they desperately need? Well, first of all, I think they need peace. I mean, it's a bit crude, but we're the band-aid, yeah? We keep people alive while the war continues. And I'm proud of that. Some people would say, well, you're not fixing the long-term problem. Well, we're not. But we're keeping people alive so they can, uh, they can make it to the peace. But what they really need from a humanitarian perspective is they need shelter, and this is what we provide. They need education materials because the education system has been systematically and deliberately bombed. So this is our core business, is to make sure that they actually survive winters and summers. And speaking of that core business, well, what inspired you to get Relief Aid off the ground? 
Well, I've worked in uh, conflict zones for 13 years, and frankly, some of these situations, like Yemen, like South Sudan, like Afghanistan, the situations are horrific for many of the families. Syria is unique in its, its scale of the uh, conflict, but it's not unique in the sense that civilians themselves are, are dying. And one of the, I, I guess, a more recent story, but it kind of shows, uh, it, it spoke to me with regards to my previous history as a young girl that we gave um, a red coat to. This was two years ago. Mm. Now we found her on the street, hit after a mortar round, wearing our red jacket. Now when I look at that, she didn't survive, clearly. She was trying to escape the city. But when I look at that and then I match that to our 40,000 children, that's 40 of the 62,000 that were supported mm. in Syria, then I think this was, this is our vision that is now living in real terms, in places that no one else can access. Oh, that's Brilliant. extraordinary. Mm. Hey, Mike, thank you so much for stopping by today. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Uh, don't forget to head along to the website, reliefaid.org.nz, and you can find out how you can help. Yes, because we do watch those pictures. We all want to help. Yeah. This is an easy way to get involved and help. So once again, thank you very yeah. much, Mike. <laughs>